So, I'm gonna tell y'all how to really get people to go vegan. This is a world This is a world premiere. This is a world. Hey y'all, welcome to another uh, vlog, another food for thought. So, um, I was really surprised. Y'all know me too well. Y'all know me too well because <laughs> I made a video that basically said vegan YouTubers are stupid and no one came to drag me. No one came to drag me. I mean, y'all didn't even take the clickbait. I mean, you know, obviously. Clearly people are figuring out like what things are like over here on this channel, so I appreciate the love. Um, so you guys, I've been checking the news and you know, there are a few things going on that are notable, but um, you know, there's some, there's, you know, uh, there's issues, there's things, shit, shit, shit's going on in Brazil, excuse my French. Stuff's going on in Brazil and uh, I've been trying to follow that, obviously, because my friend Julian Bowal, uh, lives in Brazil, and so I've been trying to keep on keep tabs on that. But there, you know, there's you know things are not looking good. They're not doing, they're not, uh, they're doing worse than than I would say they're doing worse there than we're doing in the United States in terms of the movement towards just a dictatorship, right? Towards fascism, which is really kind of um, really kind of scary that that's happening in so many places around the world right now. Um, so, you know, there's this, you know, ongoing, you know, discussion of like, you know, net neutrality and what's going to happen with that. So I hope people have been just, you know, keeping your, keeping your eye on the news and figuring out, you know, what are the ways that you might be able to get involved to, you know, make the changes and to, you know, prevent things that you don't like from happening. There are, you know, there are ways to get involved, to call your, you know, you call your politicians, work with people in your community to push back on these policies that we know are not going to be in our best interest. Interest. And I also want to thank Gary, a high fruit carburetor, for uh, making a video on the topic uh, following the video that I made last week and also thanks for letting me know that that was going up. So um, what else? Uh, I just watched a really beautiful video. I just feel like I was just in, in, in Chiang Mai with the Lost Lemurian. Uh, just a really beautiful video. Uh, their friend Kat came to Chiang Mai and they did a beautiful tour of some of the temples and if you're interested in, if you're not in Chiang Mai, which it seems like all of you are in Chiang Mai right now, um, if you're not in Chiang Mai and you want to see some beautiful imagery from Chiang Mai, do check out Karen's video on the Lost Lemurian channel, um, you know, welcoming Kat to Chiang Mai. Um, what else is going on? So I was expecting to hear some feedback from the Foot Soldier, but absolutely nothing. Crickets, crickets, crickets. Um, I do hope that some of you did check out the video, um, the Athene Wins video. And again, I want to, if possible, have a chat about that in the live stream this uh, Sunday. If um, you know, you know, yeah, if you guys are interested in that, and please do let me know in the comments section below. Um, I'm also, I thought things were slowing down uh, after, you know, doing, you know, Ready, Set, Go Race, coming back, producing the 22nd International Pedagogy and Theater of the Oppressed Conference, having the group here from SUNY Purchase for two weeks, and all of those things overlapping, and then finally ending with the, you know, playing, you know, the ghost in Hamlet uh, for Shakespeare in Detroit, and, you know, looking forward to the opportunity to work with them again. And so um, it's, you know, seemed like things were slowing down. It turns out that there's actually a couple of things that are coming up that I will try. There's the, um, the democracy convention uh, at the University of Minnesota that I'm going to be attending, I'm going to be presenting there uh, on Thursday, August 3rd. And then the weekend, uh, two weeks later, not two weeks later, 10 days later or so, a little more than 10 days later, I'm going to be heading to Chicago. And I believe Miles is going to be going with me. Miles, are you watching this video? Miles, are you going with me to Chicago? I don't know. So uh, I'm going to be in Chicago and Julian Bowal will be there. So we'll probably get some updates from Julian on what's happening in Brazil. But it's going to be another theater of the oppressed related program that's going to be presented there. I think they're actually presenting two three-day Theater of the Oppressed intensives. Uh, I will try my best to include information on those things in the description box 
below. Also, remember I left some links yesterday uh, regarding the Solidarity fundraiser. I, thanks to any of you who saw that link and went and made some contributions to Solidarity. Um, I, re I realized that I didn't talk about, like really talk about the great work that they do that you know I've seen firsthand. I talked about the fact that lights were shut off in Highland Park except for, you know, uh, at intersections. Solidarity has already succeeded in installing uh, six streetlights. Now, st when you say six streetlights, it doesn't sound like a lot, but I would, I would challenge any of you to try to get one streetlight, one streetlight <laughs> um, installed on a block. And so um, uh, what Solidarity has been able to do is have streetlights in, uh, installed in areas that are, are very high profile. So it gives a lot of people an opportunity to one, see how solar street lights work, and it's also bringing a sense of uh, security to areas that are you know, used by a lot of people. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, there's gonna be some noise off and on. Uh, it just so happens to be the day that the folks who take care of the lawn, I'm really, really fortunate. Um, the Bog Center for Nurturing Community Leadership is uh, kind of partnering with Grapeseed Detroit and they're providing some of the lawn care for the vineyard, which is a lot of work. It's about, I think the whole thing is a uh, just under a half an acre and so uh, they're providing some of the lawn care for that and they also just cut the grass in front of my house and so they're out there cleaning that stuff up so I'm not going to complain today about any of the noise Whew. okay is that everything so I want to talk a little bit about your responses I am so I was so thrilled by some of your responses, um, really thoughtful responses. Um, I want to thank um, Dan57, The Kissed Vegan 92, uh, Vegan Redneck Trucker, Alejandro Gangotiana, I think that's how you say your last name, Alejandra. Um, or I think it's Alejandro. It's Alejandro, so sorry, Alejandro. And then um, Bruce Webb, of course, Loco Motif. Uh, G is for Gary, uh, uh, Mod Vegan, you guys really just left some really um, amazing, um, Chichikov, a lot, a lot of really thoughtful responses. And it seemed that, you know, in general, folks, um, you know, were, you know, in agreement, were, were in general in agreement, although there were a lot of folks who still seem to feel like just getting the information out there is important. And I don't disagree with that. I think getting the information to anyone you can possibly get it to, broadcasting widely is crucial to uh, spreading the vegan message. Um, my, my thinking is just if I'm as an individual going into a space to do vegan advocacy, I want to go into the space that like me myself as an individual is going to have the greatest impact. And since YouTube reaches, you know, a, a wide, a broad and general audience, making videos on YouTube certainly has to be a great way to spread the vegan message. The question is then who do you market your videos to? Are you just, you know, trying to get anyone you can to watch your videos? Or are you marketing your channel to spaces where you feel they might be more inclined to have interest in what you're talking about, to further disseminate that information that you, uh, you know, further share your, your videos? And so that's just, you know, something to keep in mind. You know, how are we getting the most, um, the most out uh, the most, uh, um, what do I want to say, positive results, the best positive results for the efforts that we put into our vegan advocacy. So that brings us to the major topic of discussion in this uh, video. So, um, you know, I talked about yesterday this idea that we want to, you know, be spreading the vegan message in spaces where people are already open to the idea. And obviously, um, I didn't talk about the personal relationships that we have with individuals around. The people that we love, they are, 
Um, so even though they may show the most resistance, that is the space where, you know, setting an, an example of, you know, uh, living a healthy vegan lifestyle. And I say a healthy vegan lifestyle because a healthy vegan lifestyle is the most sustainable vegan lifestyle. And I don't mean, you know, having the, you know, best body, but just taking care of yourself, um, you know, having the energy that you need to get through the day, you know, you know, presenting a, you know, a positive outlook on the world, right? You know, being, you know, being a positive person, being a positive and loving person um, and taking care of yourself as well, right? And that is the best, I think that that is by far the best way that we can share the vegan message with the people around us, right? We can get in arguments with them, sure, but, you know, when, you know, my brother who's a little, about two years older than me sees me suddenly, you know, looking and, um, behaving um, as a much healthier person, he's gonna call me and he's gonna ask me, hey, what was that thing that you had, right? When the people that are close to me see me eating delicious foods, right? And so I think it was, uh, I think it was um, Kaori Flora who talked about an experience that, um, that they had with a coworker who was mocking and said, you know, if I was ever going to go, I know that I'm not going to go vegan because if I were, open to change, I would have, I'd already be, you know, weighing that, right? And then a year later, the person was going vegan. So, um, so that's, that's just something to keep in mind that the people who are around us are certainly, um, we do certainly have the uh, capacity to make transformation, to, to tra help transform those individuals. And again, that is by, you know, just being our most, you know, loving, nurturing, caring for ourselves and, uh, you know, demonstrating a vegan lifestyle that is just so hot that everybody wants to be a part of that, right? So yeah, making veganism the, th the thing to do, making it so desirable that people just cannot resist. Um, and I think that there's like a, a famous quote about that, or I'm, I'm sure I'll look it up and I'll, I'll include the information in the description box below. But um, even, uh, you know, trying to transform the people who are around us, I don't, I don't, I don't know that that is going to have the, the um, scale of impact that is going to be ultimately um, helpful, uh, not helpful, but as helpful, right? As efficient as when we can reach those large groups. And so I've talked about, you know, going into uh, social justice spaces or spaces where the individuals who are there are interested in social change and using those spaces, to, um, you know, exploiting, I hate to use that term, but exploiting um, people's uh, you know, already the, the analysis that people have already done about the world and the, nece the necessity for change and, you know, just bringing up the idea of, you know, you know, well, what about animals, right? What about the animals? And again, a lot of you seem to agree with that, but I think the, the, the way that we can approach these discussions, you know, first with people that we know and then in larger groups, I'll start with people that I know. What I've found is, um, you know, I don't lead with veganism, obviously, and I don't think any of us do lead with veganism, but I do, um, as soon as the, you know, topic of food comes up, especially if the person is um, suggesting something to eat that I know is an animal product, or they're suggesting that we go to a place, I, of course, you know, bring up the fact that, well, you know, I'm vegan. You know, I just, I'm vegan, right? Just leave it at that. And depending on the response that I get, um, I can decide whether or not it's worth continuing or to just, you know, go on setting, continuing and setting that example, continuing um, in the conversation, I mean. And so um, recently I mentioned to someone that I was vegan and they said to me that that was so extreme. And I said, well, you know, if you think about it, what's really extreme, and of course you all, we all know this, we all use this, what's really extreme is, you know, you know, animal commodities. And we can talk about the various things, right? Depending on who we're in this conversation with, we can talk about the impact of you know, animal products on human health. We can have talk about the impact of, you know, the, con the um, consumption of animal products uh, on the environment, or we can have a conversation about the impact on animals, depending on our relationship with that person, on how much we know about them and their love of animals, care for the environment, or care for their own health, right? So we find those ways in. But 
Um, what I found is crucial is that we never present that information as if we are um, suggesting they do anything. We, pre we present that information as if, you know, well, you know, once I found out about that, I knew that I wasn't going to be part of that anymore, right? You know, just, you, you, take, we take, the, you take the attitude that, huh, you know, I feel you and I understand where you are, but I just, once I saw that, I just, I couldn't do that anymore, right? Just keep it, keeping it low key, right? Keeping it low key and keeping it about, you know, you know, not that we have to make a big deal out of it. I just know that ugh, I'm not about that life, right? I'm not about that life. Um, and, so, and I feel like people then become like, ooh, ooh, what do you mean? You know, like, right, what do you mean about that life? What do you mean it's going to get me? Well, you know, I don't know. You know, just like, I, I just know that, you know, that's, you know, you know what I mean? And then you start giving the information, right? So like, but you keep it, you can, the idea is just to, you want to make, you want to give them as little as possible, but you want to make them as curious as possible. Make them come to you, make them woo you and right. And let the information that they get from you be like pulling teeth, right. And leave them wanting more because that's, what's going to, you know, get that person to go and do more research, right. You give them just enough to be like, well, you know, if you knew what the, you know, what the food, <laughs> what the food industry was, was, was doing to keep, you know, in collusion with the medical profet with the, you know, healthcare industry to keep you sick, you wouldn't touch that stuff either. Right. And just leave it. And then you just leave it there. Right. As opposed to, well, and then giving them the, the full, explanation. So, um, you know, tactic one is like, keep it simple, you know, drop clues as opposed to like full on tr truth bombs. Right. But like drop that, um, breadcrumb trail that's going to lead them to the, the mind that's going to then blow up when they get there. Right. And so then they feel like they've, um, they've brought themselves there as opposed to you, um, you know, subtly leading them there. That can be very, very effective. But then, um, you know, the other thing that I feel is crucial, and this is where I feel like folks like, you know, Freely back in the day was so amazing. And there are so many others, you know, now I feel like I'm past the point where I need this, but early on, the best thing, the, the best thing that I got out of watching Freely was just like, here's the food, show them the food, show them the food that they're going to be able to eat once they leave that, that nasty crap behind, right? Once they leave that poison behind, once they leave the violence behind, right? You know, show them what they're going to get. And that's, again, through example, through your lifestyle, when you bring your lunch, what's in that thing, right? Spread it out, nice, bring a napkin, have utensils, right? When you bring your lunch to work or when you bring your lunch to wherever it is, I carry around a big old cooler bag and I'll pull out half a watermelon and a spoon and sit there eating and have everybody's mouth just, you know, drooling as I eat my watermelon, right? And everybody wants to, you know, dip in and have a slice and often I'll bring a whole watermelon, cut it in half, eat half of it for myself and leave the rest out for everyone else, right? So, you know, how do you, you know, it's a seduction, y'all. It's a seduction. <laughs> it's a seduction, but it's a beautiful seduction. It's a seduction that is going to have such a positive impact on people that they're going to be thanking you for um, enticing them that way. Um, one of the great things about, um, you know, alt space, when the groups come to alt space, you know, for two weeks, you know, we had students from Purchase and there were just the most delicious foods available round the clock, all vegan, right? And so sure, there were some of them there who were going through their, you know, psychological withdrawals and wanting, you know, the things that, you know, we know are, you know, not healthy for them, you know, in the same way that, you know, the kid wants just, they just want to eat cake. They just want to eat cake because they're not, they're not aware that that's not going to sustain their body. But to spend two weeks with a group of people, like, again, showing them the food, you know, and having it be delicious, you know, the deadly veganism, deadly veganism is that stuff where you bring like straw, right? You know, no, I don't want to say that anybody does that, but I'm sure that there are vegans who call themselves, think of themselves as hardcore, who sit in front of a, a group of people and eat something that's just nasty. It's just nasty. 
Don't do that. You save your nasty food. Save the nasty stuff that you know is that, that stuff that you eat that makes you feel superior and all that stuff. Save that. Eat that when you're alone. When you're in front of other people, eat the tasty stuff. Eat the stuff that people are going to be like, ooh, can I have some? <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? And of course, I know this isn't the answer. It's not the answer because if someone had the answer, then the animals would be free and the animals aren't free. But I just want to bring some, you know, love and light and energy to the process. And there are so many um, YouTubers on vegan, on, on uh, YouTubers, uh, vegan YouTubers who are, uh, you know, who are sharing that positive message and showing us the abundance, the abundance that we can um, have, that we can partake of when we step into a vegan lifestyle, right? And doing that with the full understanding that, you know, people have their challenges, people will be on their journey, but if we make it, again, if we make it so seductive, there's no way people can resist, that is how we will you know, win people over. So, I don't know, what do you think? That's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. <laughs> love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto, big guns and big guys. I love myself, but they can